Okay, so what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to add that right here. So I'm going to use the Okay, so block one exists in our drawing. Let's see what happens when we put block four in. We get nil. So what we could do here, we're gonna use an if statement. So if table search blocks. So what a table is, Maybe I'll do another one just so you can see what it uh So what tables are is they're just like databases of certain uh certain objects in the drawing. You have layers, you have blocks, you have textiles. Um there's there's more of them. I forget how how many there are exactly. So if you want to if you do a Google search, Autolisp table search it'll show you all the all the tables that there are so there's tables there's something called dictionaries as you get more into the code and all it does is it, it just stores some information of, of the layers so for example we have the the layer name stored these are uh, called association pairs if I remember correctly so zero is this just the type two is the name I don't, I forget what the rest of these are. 62 represents the color. Anyways, I'm going off on a bit of a tangent and you can guess what this is, six dot line type. Just has information of the element, but we're not using it to get the information. We're, we're just using this command to get the, to see if it exists in our drawing or not, right? So if table search, we do table search, we search the block table and we look for our block four. If equals table search block block four nil so what i'm going to do is plug that into here so as you're seeing i can i if i double click i can select enclosing brackets and i can paste it in this lisp console and test the code out kind of easier than going back and forth to the drawing to the command line or something it says true oh perfect so if I put block one in here, I should get a nil. Yeah. So I'll change that back to uh, block four. If equals table search nil. Exit. It'll just close the routine. But actually, I want to fix that already. That's not going to do us much good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tab all these lines forward. Oops. Maybe I'll just use spaces. Actually, there's a quicker way to do that. So I, I'm just going to show you quickly how an if statement works. You have if this condition exists do this and if statements are really or else or else do this so this is the basic structure of an if statement if this condition exists do this or else do this and this part is optional so if this condition exists it would do something and then skip over the rest of the code so basically my or else is going to be the rest of the code down here so I, and this is where i start usually for myself this is where i forget brackets and whatnot so i'll just be very careful as i do it if i screw it up i'll have to restart the whole lesson and re-record the entire video so i gotta make sure i get it right the first try so what, what we're going to do here one thing i should note is that when you're using the if statement 
you can't have more than one piece of code run in the same and not more than one line you can have nested functions but you can't have functions like this like this would crash so it can only be like for example you can have say if you're in model space switch to layer one or else switch to layer two meaning you're in lay a layout in paper space I mean you can only run one piece of code in if statement the exception is if you use this program the reason for that is the if only expects one argument for if for the if part or for the if the condition is true part and one argument for the or else part so what this program does is it allows it tells autolist that there's going to be multiple arguments as part of this this in this case the or else statement So I'm going to close that, and I put a marker here, end. So if I didn't have that program, basically I'd only be able to run one of these. Because I could run this, there's two functions in this, but this is a nested function, so all this would run okay. So it's not one line of code, it's just one function, but one function including neck nested functions. If you have more than one function, then you need to run this program. And the reason I don't, I say, I, I uh, distinguish between lines of code is because I could put all this on the same line as if I wanted, but it would absolutely not matter. It doesn't matter if this is on one line or 1000 lines, it's still going to read the code the exact same way. So for formatting, it's just the, the programmer's own convenience. It doesn't matter how, how I how I set this up like that for instance it would read it the exact same way provided I don't delete the bracket okay so I got that program set up and if you're very keen you probably know that I still need to add one more bracket this one should close my if statement hopefully and it does so I'll put this and if so what I want to do up here is for the for the if the condition is true part I can also put a program here as well so what I'm gonna do is and this I'll fix this later but I'm gonna use the alert function I'll make sure I close that program off. So this is when I really need to check my code. When you're adding if statements, especially if you're uh, you're encasing lots of code then you really need to be careful with your bracket. So just uh, my recommendation is that you just uh, be very careful and put lots of notes like I have. It should be okay. And you always have this, this to check. Okay, so I'm going to reload this. Let's see what happens. Block does not exist in drawing. Okay, that's terrible. So I just put that alert in there just to give you an idea of how the code is working. And I kind of lost my place here. But I'm going to change that to a print, uh, print C or a print clean. To be honest, I don't actually know what this really stands for, but we just call it print cleanly. I'm going to reload that. And now it just appears in my command line instead of that uh, uh, alert box coming up. So that just makes the code, uh, um, I don't want to say fail, but it makes the code exit in a more suitable way rather than having that that di that dialogue window come up or that uh, 
that floating command line window come up because that that can be annoying when that appears when you don't expect it to and you have to close it it's quite an interruption okay so the last thing to check here I'm just going to turn this back to block one like it's supposed to be load that into the drawing I'm gonna make sure my uh, or else statement works and it doesn't I have a uh, forgot to change it here hopefully that uh, fixes it Okay, so we're back to where we started there. So to be honest, I'm not uh, completely satisf satisfied with my ex explanation of the if statement. So I'm going to do in the next video, I'm going to kind of do a refresher on it. Um, and if that doesn't satisfy me, then I'll probably do an adjacent video just on conditionals because it's not, there's, there's another conditional besides the if function. It's actually called the, you type a uh, C-O-N-D, the conditional, and that can be a, a lot more useful than an if statement. I still use if statements, of course, but the the condition conditional function is uh, much much better. So coming up in in uh, future tutorials in this series, pretty soon in the next either the next tutorial or the one after, I'm going to show you how to pass variables to a function, and that's probably the most important aspect of this block insert routine. Because my goal here is to make this routine something you can just copy and paste and apply it to other blocks so you'll be able to rapidly create a basic block insert routine for your entire block library if you so wish so stay tuned for that and thanks for watching up to this point